This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there. This is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Janai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. This is Sarah Bubbles, and you're listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Oh, hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. Previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday. And interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox. Sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play Out One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J. And for the first time in seven months, the return of Coleco Yachts. I feel like that Ludacris album, Back for the First Time, that's what it seems like to me. Hello, world. (laughs) And it's a great day for wrestling, because we are wrestling with Sarah Bubbles. Hey, guys. What's going on? Well, good. How are you? I feel so honored to be here for the return of your co-host. It's it's an honor. Yes, seven months away, and finally we got him back on for an interview. <laughs> well, he's in for a treat. Let me tell you. <laughs> hey, it's it's someone from the south, so I had to sh- oblige. We have to show some <laughs> southern hospitality, right? It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time for sure. <laughs> and. Always a good time is uh, seeing you compete. When is what you got coming up, Sarah? Well, actually, today, the 13th, um, I'm going to be performing at the Lawrence County, Ohio um, County Fair. We're going to be down there um, in the grandstand. We are the main event tonight at 7 30 p.m. Um, going to come out at FTC. We're that home promotion. Um, we're going to be out there just, you know, doing what we do. We got a whole lineup of talent ready to go, and you guys are going to be seeing a great show tonight. We actually have an action-packed summer. We're going to have a show um, at our FTC AOG training facility on July 23rd, and then we're going to be doing a show in Portsmouth, Ohio on August 6th. It'll be our first time running in Portsmouth, so we're excited about that, Um, and then, man, I can't even think. We got so much going on. Uh, there's a there's an event called Pogue Landing in Ashland, Kentucky, and that's in September. We'll be performing there as well. Um, that's a new thing for us as well. Um, we will be at the Carter County Fair in Kentucky. And that is on August 17th, and I know I've got out of order now. <laughs> um, and we've also uh, been booked to perform at the Boyd County Fair, which is also in Kentucky. And I'm not sure that we even have a date for that one yet, but... Whenever the Boyd County Fair is, Kentucky, make sure you're there because FTC is going to be there, and it's going to be great. So, um, we have even more, but I don't know all of them because at this point, I can't keep them all straight. And then okay. on top of that, outside of the FTC promotion, I've got other things booked with other promotions, and I can't, I'm can't. i going to need a calendar at this point, boys. <laughs> <laughs> what well, sounds like you're super busy. Your schedule is jam-packed. It really is. All I can tell everyone is if you want to see me and you want to know where to find me, just check my social medias because I try to post it all on there as much as possible. Uh, You can find me on Facebook at Sarah Bubbles. Um, I had to put a little asterisk under my over my E because it said Bubbles is not a legit last name. So it looks like Boo Blaze. (laughs) Um, But I'm on there. I am on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram as Sarah underscore bubbles underscore seven four zero. Um, I'm on Twitter. I think it's, if you search Sarah bubbles, I'm going to pop up. Um, but I think it's like Sarah underscore bubbles. And so that's Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah, that's the main ones right there. Um, you can also search my, my home promotion, which is FTC wrestling. 
and you can search my training facility, which is FTC Art of Grappling. And do we got merchandise? I do. I don't have any sort of store set up. So what I always tell people is if you want, I have t-shirts. And then um, if you ever catch me at a show, I like to sell stuff for little kids because kids love me so much. Um, and so I always have little things of bubbles. And I have little, like, pop-it bracelets. Kids really dig that. And I also have 8 by 10s for anyone who wants them. And I sign those for free. Um, oh, wow. So the 8x10s are like $5 a piece, and then they come with a free autograph. Um, and selfies are always free because I just love taking pictures. So, <laughs> um, but, so, now see, look, I lost my train of thought because I got all excited. Um, <laughs> but, no, what I always tell people is if you want to buy a shirt and you're just too far away to, like, ever see me in person, reach out to me on some of my social medias. And I can work out something with shipping with you personally, because I don't want to like set up in a store and it gets all crazy and stuff. If I ever get a little bigger and a little more established than maybe one of these days, but like right now I have one shirt with one design gotcha. with one color. So <laughs> maybe someday in the future, but for now, just talk to me. It's fine. <laughs> awesome. And of course, all of those links uh, will be in the description below for our YouTube and chat box. All right, uh, let's get into it. You work for uh, FTC and more recently XBW. Can you tell us about your relationship with those companies? Well, FTC is where my heart is. Um, that is my home promotion. That's where I've been training for a little over a year now. Um, that's my family. Uh, those are my guys. I like I would die for them. Those are that's my home. I did work for XBW. Um, I've worked for them once, and it was a very good promotion. Uh, they ran very smoothly. I would definitely go back. Um, the biggest problem is they're about two hours away, and they run mostly on Tuesdays, and I have a full-time uh, shoot job. <laughs> so okay. so it's kind of hard to get that far you know, on a Tuesday. Right. But it is a really nice promotion up there. And they're, they're a newer promotion. They're still growing, but they're definitely headed in the right direction. Um, I've also worked for BGW Battleground Wrestling, um, and I always get this town wrong because I'm not familiar with it, but I think it's it's somewhere in West Virginia. <laughs> I think it's St. Albans, but I'm probably wrong. Sorry, Lee. Love you, man. But um, there, that's a really great promotion, too. Uh, Lee Jordan is the promoter there, and he runs a really solid show. Um, very smooth. He always has really solid talent, and he's very selective with his talent. He won't just let anyone on his show. Um I'm getting ready to work for a pr promotion called BWA, uh, Buckeye Wrestling Alliance. That's out of Newark, Ohio. I'm going to be working for them in August, September, and November. <laughs> He's just lined me right on up there. Um, and so I'm excited for that. I know a few people out of FTC have already worked for him, and they all say he's really great to work for. So I'm really excited for that. Seems like. Uh, you know, at the beginning stages of your career was just, you know, FTC, uh, FTC and it seems like you really ground out now. Yeah, I just, I, I really was able to pick up momentum pretty fast, but I really have FTC to thank for that because we kind of have, um, I know you guys had Brock's Boulder on here. Yes. And he's, he says it best. He has this mentality of, if I eat, you eat. So anytime we get a booking, we'll say, hey, do you need any other spots filled? Because I've got some guys that are ready to work. And that's kind of how it works. Um, if we get a booking, we try to get all of our all of our other people on as well. But also our promoter, Joe Pace, is a very established promoter and very well respected. So we get a lot of other promotions that will reach out to Joe and say, hey, you know, I need five guys and a girl. What do you got? And then Joe will ask us if any of us want to work. And so it's really, that's how I got on at XVW. Um, they said, hey, we need two guys and a girl. What do you got, Joe? And Joe asked us if anybody wanted to work. And I was like, yes, absolutely. So a few of us were able to get booked at XVW because somebody asked Joe for his opinion. Um, so it's really helpful to have someone like that who's well um, respected in the industry. Okay. Uh, Kaliko, you have a question. I want to go on that because I feel like it's very rare when it, it goes with the one eat, we all eat. Because 
you know, wrestling in itself sometimes tend to be such an individual sport. So it's very refreshing to see, like, okay, it ain't me. We, we bring in a whole crew. It sounds like y'all running your own kind of, like, invasion in a sense. But <laughs> it's, it's definitely a different atmosphere. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in wrestling, like, at all. But from what I've heard, it's a very ego-driven industry. Yeah. But ours is very much a family. We... We want each other to succeed. We want we want all of us to just do the best that we can. Um, and it's all about the team. It's all about making FTC look good. It's not about ourselves, if that makes any sense. Like we obviously we want ourselves to to succeed as well, but it's not at the risk or at the how do you say that? At the, the sake of each other. The detriment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're not trying to stab each other in the back so that we can get the next leg up. We want we want to take our buddies up with us. Nice, nice. I, my question actually pertains to FTC because they run all through the tri-state, right? Um, we we dabble a little here and there. We try to stay more in that Ironton, Ohio, Ashland, Kentucky area, which are only about five to seven miles apart from each other. They're right. right. Over. Um, but. We we go wherever people want us to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of like, it's very rare because you got like most Southern uh, southern promotions, they kind of stick within that city. And you guys have the advantage of actually not being that far. So it kind of gives you that. It's almost kind of like it's preparing you for the road, but not as daunting as someone driving from, let's say, Ironton, Ohio to Texas or to Atlanta or something like that. So how do you take uh, the approach when you do have to go out of town and and preparing yourself mentally for different crowds, especially in a different state? Because I know sometimes Kentucky could be different from Ohio, which could be different from West Virginia. Well, um, our, our trainers really teach us your gimmick needs to be something that can get over no matter where you are. Um, and so that's something that we were taught early on. Um, so you need something that's not pigeonholed to your area. Um, so for example, if you, if, if you had an Appalachian gimmick, that'll get over in our area, but if you go to a big city, it's not going to resonate. Right. And so I think something like that's really important. Um, and it's also important to educate yourself so that you're cultured to kind of assimilate with all areas, if that makes sense. So you can't have culture shock if you're going to go somewhere big like that, especially for those of us who are from much smaller areas, like very rural areas. Does that kind of answer your question? Actually, it does. It, it does, because especially coming from a, a small city, uh, going to another small city, you might be able to get that, that, that small town feel, but if you're going to somewhere like a Lexington or or, uh, or even a Columbus, it could be a lot different. So yeah, that's really great. What you what you're trying to say is cell bubble bubbles works some places, but sometimes you need to be Sarah Buble and others. That's right. <laughs> you know she should get a, a little suit, come out, call me irresponsible. <laughs> Listen, I honestly think Sarah Bubbles could be Sarah Bubbles and work anywhere because she's relatable, man. I mean, Sarah Bubbles, I, I, I always, when I'm trying to explain myself, I tell people that I'm like the love child of Madonna and Jojo Siwa and then Lisa Frank threw up on me. Like, <laughs> and it makes everybody laugh every single time and everybody instantly has a mental image of me that's, and it makes them smile. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, I mean, accurate description, I would say. I'm telling you. And, and so the thing is, children love me because I look like a cartoon character and I kind of look like Jojo Siwa and kids love that. And then women love me because... I remind them of either themselves when they were teenagers or the characters that they watched on TV when they were either teenagers or like younger children, depending on their age. Um, and then 
men love me because I'm a female wrestler. And that's all there is to that. So I get over with literally every person in the audience. It just works. Absolutely. And, you know, let's get into another thing that you've done. You competed against Maddie Exodus for the, I believe, the XBW women's title. Um, what did it mean? What did it mean getting that opportunity, especially so early in your career? That was a really cool experience. Um, that was my debut at XBW, and to walk in and be given a title shot, um, it was it was an honor to to just walk in and get that. It really showed me that they had a lot of faith in me, um, that they really respected me as a wrestler. Um, to go up against their champion, who is very well respected and very well known in the area, um, and she is not from that area. She she travels a good distance to get there. So for her to travel so far and to be as popular as she is, that says something about her. And then for me to come in and automatically get a title shot, I was honored. And watching the match, you were working heel, correct? Sometimes you just got to play the hand you're dealt. <laughs> Was that the first time you had to go on that side of the spectrum? Yes. What was that like? Well, um, let's, okay. Have you ever just wanted to be someone that you, you aren't, and then you actually get to do it and you think, okay, well, that was fun, but I don't really want to do that anymore. Yes. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Was. yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's one of those, it's an experience that you've had in life, but it wasn't, it was just that. It was just an experience that you had in life. Okay. I and that's that. what that was. Oh, I thought she, I was going to be like, she's breaking more than bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, that's my catchphrase. My catchphrase is I'm going to burst your bubble. <laughs> Uh, Kaliko, you have a question. I do. It, it it actually deals with your year. It's it's it seems like you've been so you picked up very very quickly in a year, and it's very um a, a road not taken because some people actually want to take their time and kind of get to do things, or they'll have them wait in the wings and then they'll debut. Um, my question is, what has been the the most challenging thing um, going in, so going in, expecting one thing, and it's skyrocketing so fast. And what is the 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 positive aspect of that? So let's just say, what's the one thing that you gained from going in so fast, and what's the challenge that has been going in that fast? Well, um, I think the biggest challenge for me was the learning curve. Because um, I'll share with you guys, and I share with everyone. I don't try to hide it. When I first started, I knew literally nothing about wrestling. Um, I always share this funny story that I was standing in the ring the very first day with Bobby Blaze, my trainer. And he said, all right, now he's going to take you to the turnbuckle. And I stopped him. And I said, I'm sorry, the what? I had no idea what a turnbuckle was. Because um, wow. I knew literally nothing about wrestling. Um, they they had told me the the person who got me into it he said um now when you walk in jillian hall is going to be standing there please don't be starstruck by her and i said i don't have any idea who that is um and he was like awesome great perfect <laughs> sarcastically of course like you don't even know who jillian hall is oh my gosh you know what i mean like i had no idea so um i had never watched wrestling in my life so I had to learn from nothing. I think that was the biggest challenge because it was also like they don't teach in slow motion. <laughs> so I just had to learn as fast as everyone else who had been watching their whole lives. Right. Um, that was a big challenge. But I think for me, I'm a little older than everyone else. 
not everyone. I'm a little older than most. Um, so remembering what my body is capable of and noticing things that I didn't think my body was capable of. Mm -hmm. It was, it was kind of reassuring to know that I'm capable of more than just having a desk job and being a mom. It was really empowering. So that was super cool. Ooh. I, I would think not knowing wrestling would also kind of be a, an advantage in a sense, because sometimes it's like kind of like going to a class where you kind of know the topic and you feel like you're overshooting yourself. I, I think being not knowing anything, it kind of makes you a sponge. So you, you soak up everything a lot more, a lot quicker because you're not fighting what you've seen before. Does that make sense? Or would it? I mean, I would hope so. Or is it did make it a lot quicker for me to learn things once I learned what things were. Like, I didn't know what basic things looked like. I didn't know what a headlock looked like or what a body slam looked like. So when they would tell me to do something, they would have to show me at least what it looked like first because I had never even seen it. Or, like, I didn't know that there were bad guys and good guys in wrestling because, like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't want to expose the business, but I didn't understand literally anything like the things that now that I've been in it for a year, I just take for granted. I knew none of it. So <laughs> like, it's, it's scary to me. The fact that I've learned as much as I have in a year, but that's because once I realized that I had fallen in love with wrestling, I started just studying as much as I possibly could. I asked the guys to give me lists of men and women from any era and any promotion to just start studying and I would just find as much film as I possibly could. And so I just watched all sorts of people. Um, and the guys always give me a hard time, still to this day. Um, anytime they mention anything, they'll be like, you're going to Google it real fast? Cause, <laughs> because I did it for probably at least the first six to eight months I was in training. Anything they'd say, I'd look it up real fast on my phone. Just because I wanted to know what they were talking about. But yeah, I had to learn everything from nothing. It seems like you know, learning completely from scratch has given you maybe a greater appreciation of what you're doing. Is that what I hear right in saying that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, because now, you know, because I, just because I had never really watched wrestling doesn't mean I didn't know it existed. Um, obviously, I had heard of like The Rock or I had heard of John Cena. So I knew that wrestling was a thing in the world. And I knew that a lot of people used the F word and called it fake. Um, I knew that people had their opinions on it. But now knowing what it is and knowing the, the finesse and the dance and the magic and all of the work that goes into it, I have such an appreciation for it and such an appreciation and respect for all the people that have been in it throughout the years um putting all that work into learning it over this past year i think it's really given me an appreciation for so many different people and so many different like eras and promotions and um i spent a lot of time learning about my promoter um no sorry my trainer uh, bobby blaze and he is truly an underrated talent like still to this day, even he is a wealth of knowledge and he does, he did so much in the industry and hardly anyone knows who he is. And it's because he's a humble person. He's not out there bragging about his accomplishments. He's teaching the future generation of wrestlers strictly because of his pure love for the sport. Um, and I just wonder how many other people are out there doing the same thing and they're underrated talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just something to think about. Perfect. Um, now, uh, you had mentioned your mother. Um, you know, when did your kids find out that you were a pro wrestler and what did they do with that? Well, um, I'm a single mom, so my kids knew from the very first day because I had to um, arrange childcare. <laughs> I even walked the very first day and I told I told the trainers I said I'll be here as long as I have childcare because when that 
um, be, becomes a problem, I'm not going to be here anymore because my kids will always come first. And they said we, that they understood. Um, but yeah, they've known from the beginning and they absolutely love it. Um, they, they think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, on Saturdays at the training facility, we have what we call open mat where the trainers aren't there. We just kind of come in and we work on our own skills on our own time. And we always take our kids and just let them kind of hang out. And I always ask my kids every Saturday morning, I'll wake up and I'll be like, Hey, you guys want to go down to the shop today? And they're always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're so excited to go like every single time, because if they were to ever say no, then I just wouldn't go. Cause I, I don't ever want to drag them along right. because then it's not fun for them. Um, but yeah, so they've known since the beginning, they always, they've always thought it was super cool. Um, my daughter is 10 and my son is five and believe it or not, my daughter is the one that's like, this is so cool. And my son's like, Ugh. like <laughs> you would think it'd be the opposite, but she thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, she thinks I'm the coolest person ever for doing it. And one of the guys asked her last week if she was going to be a wrestler when she gets older. And she was like, yeah, like <laughs> so she's definitely fully sold on it, man. And uh, what do you want them to get out of seeing you in the ring wrestling? More than anything, I want them to understand that they are capable of doing anything they set their mind to as long as they put in the work and the effort. Um, and that's what I want them to get out of anything in life. Um, before the reason I got into wrestling was because I had been on this big, like weight loss journey, body transformation journey, and I had hit a roadblock. And so I was talking to one of my friends that day and I said, I, I haven't lost weight in like months and I don't know what to do. Like I hadn't been able to get to the gym because I was going through this whole separation thing and it was just, you know, single mom life, pick up the kids and go home because I don't want to leave them with someone. And he had said, well, come join me at wrestling. I said, no, that's crazy. I don't know anything about wrestling. He said, well, just come. It's good therapy. You'll have a good time. You'll meet new people. Uh, and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And I wanted to prove to my daughter that it's not about the number on the scale, but it's about how you feel and it's about being healthy. Right. And so I was really like very aware of not looking at the scale, not looking at the size of my body, but just staying healthy. And I thought, what better way to do that than to become more active, not sitting on the couch, but getting out and doing something. And so that's why I decided to kind of get in this and, you know, get out of that rut of just coming home and sitting every night, getting out, being more active. Um, and then I didn't even realize how much more active this would make me. And it does involve my kids a lot more than I thought it would too. Awesome. That's completely awesome. I like that. Well, thanks. <laughs> uh, Kalito, you have a question. Yeah, uh, my question is, it seems like wrestling is giving you a, a new lease on life because I understand, trust me, I, I kind of get the whole separation thing. It's almost like kind of like you're losing a part of yourself. And it sounds like this just gave you a whole nother uh, uh, reason to to be, or not to be is in to be alive, but like something to enjoy to kind of get yourself to de-stress from that. And that, that's really, really uh commendable on that and plus girls always listen uh to girls when it comes to wrestling so it's not not nothing new to me to see that you know your your daughter wants to be a wrestler uh considering that she wants to take on the mantle eventually of being a wrestler uh what is your state of the female wrestling arena now because now we're starting to see more moms wrestling we're starting you know it's starting not to be this thing where you just have to be this cute ditzy uh girl who's athletically built as long as you can go in the ring you can you can do it and do you see that landscape changing uh more so for single moms to actually come and wrestle because it seems like you're on a route that's not followed as having kids then wrestling rather than wrestling than having the kids. Yeah. So like I said, I got into it a lot later in life. Um, and I do, I do see that women are kind of changing the way they're seen in wrestling. Um, and 
I paint myself as like the female powerhouse. Um, I'm not going to get in there and be dainty. I'm not going to get in there and be weak and frail. Um, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to throw you around. <laughs> Whether, no matter who you are, <laughs> I'm going to get in there and I'm going to throw you around. Um, and that's like, I think that power is how we as women are trying to present ourselves, no matter who we are. If, if you weigh 80 pounds, you're wanting to present yourself as powerful. If you weigh 400 pounds, you're trying to present yourself as powerful. Anything in between, because what we want is we just want the respect. And there are a lot of women back in the day that were really, really good wrestlers and they couldn't get respect because of the stigma that came with female wrestling. Oh, yeah. um, we say that Jillian Hall was our trainer for about the first six months that I trained. And because of the era that she was in, she didn't get the respect she deserved. Um, but she was a really, really good and still is to this day, really good technical wrestler. Um, she taught me a lot in the six months that she was there. Um, a lot about female wrestling which is a little more of a finesse than just regular technical wrestling. Right. Um, and in, since after those first six months, she kind of went and did her own thing. Um, and I completely respect her for knowing what she needs in her life. Um, but since then, Bobby Blaze has been our single trainer. I'm so sorry. Hold on just a second. Sorry. Since then, Bobby Blaze has been our single trainer and he actually still will do stuff like that, teach us. Now, uh, if you're working with another female, you can do this and uh, you can work with the hair and it just kind of works better for females. You know what I mean? Um, but man, Jillian, she really, she really was an underrated female wrestler. Um, and it was because of the era that she was in. And I really, I really hate that for her, but, but she did really well for herself. I mean, she was, she was up there. She was a diva and she was a diva champion. So, um, but I don't even, we got sidetracked. I don't even remember the original question. Sorry. <laughs> but I, I mean, honestly, that ties into it because I always felt like that 2004 to 2010 era of women wrestlers in WWE really didn't get the justice because I, I always say it into my heart. I always say Natalia is like, was the right wrestler at the wrong time because uh, she could really go. She was really a grappler and and they were just fumbling with bra and panties matches. So I, I could always say that. But uh, to me, I think that you guys are getting back to the, or the society is getting to caring more about what you can do in the ring rather than, you know, what you look like. And I think that to me is a great thing for everyone in general. Yeah, I can completely agree with that. I do see that shift um with women's wrestling i do see that we're getting a lot more respect um we're not so much seen as a side attraction but we're seen as a legit match in the in the show now uh you did mention jillian hall um with the time you did spend with her want any good karaoke no nope not good karaoke anyway <laughs> Well, karaoke in general, then. Um, we had our fair share of karaoke. We definitely did. That was one of her favorite things. What, what's your go-to song? Mine? Yes. Oh, I just, I just observe. <laughs> I, just, I just watch. Um, we don't. We don't want that. <laughs> she, she's like, she, she like, I secretly observe as I'm scrolling for Leonard Skinner songs in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the one that I, I know parts of lots of songs, but to know enough words to sing it, that's my brain doesn't retain enough for that. <laughs> I think we need oh, I've, I, I've been there. Trust me. That's why the screen's there. For, it, it was there for me because that stayed fumbling, especially the rap parts. No, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, now you talked with uh, Natalia Markova, a big name on the Indies. What was that experience like? That was honestly probably the coolest experience I've had so far. I'm trying to like rack my brain to make sure that that's justified in saying that, but it was so awesome. She was, and I, I hope I'm not kayfaving her because I'm not sure what her natural gimmick is like, but she was really the coolest person. Like when we were, uh, when we were in the locker room, she was asking, what are your moves? What do you do? Well, I want to make sure that you get um, what you do in the match because I want you to look really good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she wanted to make sure she's a big name. People were coming just to see her, right. but she wanted to make sure that I looked good in that match. You know what I mean? And I thought, how selfless of her, like how thoughtful of her, someone, this, that was like my, I don't know, third or fourth show. And here she is an experienced vet and people had paid money to see her. People had paid a good deal of money earlier that day to have pictures taken with her. And she was more concerned about making sure I looked good. And I was like, wow. Like, and she later on after the match, she gave us, um, feedback on our moves and how we could improve them and it wasn't like in a rude way at all it was just a it was like a business only kind of way you know what i mean yeah. i didn't take any sort of offense to it at all i was really grateful for it it was really cool really honestly probably the coolest experience ever that's really awesome uh not that for any by the other person in that tag match being released it it was you know that was Reese and I had to put our differences aside for that because <laughs> that was FTC versus ECC and at the end of the day Reese and I are both from FTC so when someone's attacking your home it doesn't matter whether you like each other or not you're gonna come together it's so it's kind of like when your brother and sister um, so Reese and I we might really not like each other but it's like when you're sisters and you fight against each other like i can tear my sister's hair out but if someone else tries to tear her hair out i'm gonna beat them to a pulp you know what i mean gotcha. so that's how that is like oh. <laughs> i get that one hundred thousand percent i'm the oldest four so i feel that i felt that in my soul so you understand <laughs> That's so Reese is is FTC family and she's my greatest rival. But if someone else is coming at FTC family, I'm gonna take them out every day of the week. That's how that goes. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> you have a question. Of course. It's it's dealing with learning, uh like like James said, it's always about the learning. You, you all recently had Tommy Wildfire Rich, who I think is totally, un, uh, you know, unsung when it comes to like in the South and NWA and Shane Douglas, another unsung person. I, I always think like, what is the, what person other than your trainers gave you the, the biggest influence into your current wrestling career? Oh my. Um, well, <laughs> that's a really tough one because I've, you can name, you can name a list. We, we can go down the list. Well, we've met a lot of people. Um, so just in the year that I've been in this, I have had seminars with the two that you named also with Gangrel, also with Scotty too hottie. Um, Golly, I think I forgot someone because it's hard to keep track at this point. Um, we had a, a WrestleCon, so like a little convention thing, where I had a really nice conversation with ODB. Um, Malachi Black sat with all of us students and went over old British wrestling film with us and gave us like notes about how he watches and how he studies and what we should watch for and who we should watch and who we should study. That was super cool. Um, we got to meet Rikishi, and he talked to us for a long time. 
Um, we've met Eric Redbeard. He was cool. He's very quiet. He's a very quiet individual, um, but he's really cool. Um, we've met DDP. We've met um, Sergeant Slaughter. Um, I was able to meet, well, I spent a lot of time with Natalia Markova. And then um, oh, the girl with the fiery red hair and her husband writes for Raw. Shoot, I'm awful with names. Oh, my gosh. No, that's a good one, though. But no. Um, oh, my gosh. I know as soon as I'm off of this, I'm going to remember her name, and now it's killing me. But anyway, she's really great, too. Um, oh, uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm getting great It's going to drive me nuts. Well, so if I remember, I'll let you know. But anyway, um, but we met her, and uh, we met the Godfather and um coco beware and so we've met a lot of people is the point i'm trying to make here oh and i've met jordan grace that was really awesome um because she was one that i actually studied early on remember i said i was given the list yeah. she was on that list and then i met her i shared a card with her that was cool um so gangrel gave me some really good uh, not me personally, he did a seminar, so he talked to all of us, but I felt like he was talking to me. He gave us some really good advice about right now, what WWE is looking for right now. And he told us, he said, don't even try for WWE right now. Like, legit, don't do it. Because right now, they want, like, legit famous people. Like, they're wanting college athletes. That's Or, like, social media stars. Those are the people they want. So, like, they signed Logan Paul. They signed some uh, Brazilian or South American college athlete or something like that, um, because those are the people he's looking for. And then he said, that's who he's looking for today. And then he said, next week, he could be looking for some guy that looks like Kevin Owens. You never know. Right. It depends on Vince's flavor of the week. So just because they're looking for those college athletes right now, don't give up forever. Um, and he said, the best thing you can do is grow your social media presence. Um, because they look a lot for that. Look at your following. Um, it plays a big factor in it. So Gangrel um, gave us a lot of insight. And, you know, he's one that's made it in there. He had a big stint in there. So that was really helpful. But if I can be really honest, and I don't want to sound ungrateful in any way, but when your trainers were Jillian Hall and Bobby Blaze, it's kind of hard to get outside influences that really wow you because I've had, I've had two trainers that made it to the top and had really good stints in the top. So um, we'll get these people that come in and do seminars and a lot of the stuff that they tell us in these seminars, we've either heard from Jillian or Bobby tells us every single week in training. So we just have really good training. Um, and that's, I tell Bobby that all the time. <laughs> I'm always like, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, kissing his butt or nothing, but it's just, he's really good at what he does. And I don't think he even realizes it most of the time. So that just sounds like that he's basically, it sounds like when they come in, you see them more as your peers than, than, than being starstruck, which I think is one big key because I think, uh, sometimes, you know, they want to see that you're wanting to be on their level and, and be in the ring with them and do it instead of trying to be the fan person in the back. Sometimes we kind of get that in, with some wrestlers, but I, I'm glad that that's the way it's approached with you and it helps. No, I, would, I wouldn't agree that I see myself as their peer because I'm nowhere near their level, but... I don't get starstruck, <laughs> but that's probably because of my ignorance on how famous they actually are. <laughs> um, but I definitely don't feel like I'm equivalent to them in any way, shape, or form. Oh, dude, don't look up the Godfather in 98. That dude was wilding. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, let's talk about Brock's Bulldog. 
What's a pet peeve you just don't understand about him? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about Brock's boulder. Um, well, he's the one that got me in this mess. Um, he, he's, I mean, I, I've kind of been talking about him a little bit off and on the whole time. What? He's the one that convinced me to start wrestling. Um, he is my biggest supporter and also my biggest critic other than myself. Um, but my biggest critic this whole time, he's the one that, um, I can, I can always count on him to be honest and tell me how much I actually did mess up when everyone else is like, Oh no, you, you were okay. He'll be like, mm -mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> but he knows that that's what I need to get better. And I know that he knows that. Um, but he is our FTC AOG champ and he has been for several months now. He's doing pretty good. He's got a pretty good scent going. Um, he's also branched out to many different promotions and he's got um, a few, he's working a few more promotions here in the near future. He actually just worked for New South Wrestling in Lexington uh, just a couple weeks ago, actually. So that's a new development. So, uh, what did you say? What was the last thing that you said? A pet peeve. You just don't understand about them. <laughs> oh gosh, I can. I only get to list one. <laughs> you list you want. As many as you want, however you want. There are no rules. So, okay. So here's the thing. Um, anytime we go anywhere as a group, um, Brox always feels the need to drive. Well, I have to sit shotgun because I get horribly car sick. Um, he and I are so alike that we clash really bad. Uh, we both have control issues. So since I can't drive, I am the world's worst backseat driver. Um, therefore, I get on his very last nerve because I'll, I'll try to navigate for him or I use the imaginary break that's in the floorboard <laughs> a lot oh my god <laughs> or i like grab the handle that's up like above the window a lot or i do the gasp like you know the oh and there's nothing there or <laughs> oh man <laughs> but the thing is like i try not to um but he still feels the need to tell me like stop it i know what i'm doing i know how to drive i know what i'm doing like so it's constant back and forth like um, so my pet peeve is the fact that he feels the need to remind me that I'm getting on his nerves. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, well, you know, he, uh, that, uh, <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's just a very, um, short tempered individual, very short tempered. And that, that just goes in, the driving thing kind of falls in with that. So we'll just leave it at that. Over under how many times you ask, why did you park there? No, I don't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Um, no. I just do the whole, like, watch out for that. And he'll be like, I see it. Like, <laughs> oh, man. It is like 18 feet away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But to, but to you, it's like two inches. That type of <laughs> yes, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's you know, if if either of you are married or ever have been married or just had any sort of significant other that was that backseat driver, it's basically that annoying. Oh no, I know. That's why I'm asking all these in depth questions. <laughs> <laughs> I already, I I'm there because it's like, why did you park there? It's like I I never get mad when I park anywhere I want to park. <laughs> 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 so i know so that's why i get to go into it in detail like okay so it's like a personal driving test person on on permanently for life <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. i always make the joke to the boys that it depends on how they want to see me but to all of them i almost serve as either the wrestling mom wife or girlfriend 
Because a wife and a girlfriend are different. One you enjoy and one you really don't. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> now, depending on your situation, your either girlfriend is very flattered or your wife is very mad. <laughs> I'm not going to confirm nor deny any of those situations. <laughs> All I'm going to say, it's good to be a carefree pastor. <laughs> Listen, I always say that I'm happily divorced and happily single. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Yeah. Um, all of this blog's folder talk, it does beg the question, when are we going to see Sarah Puckles get in the ring against Bronx Boulder? That will... Well, okay, so how's this? I don't... I never say never... But I would like to think that will never happen. Um, because, um, because Brox and I, we're friends. We are um, in, in and out of the ring. We are friends. We might get on each other's very last nerve. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we are friends. Um, and I would like to think that we would tag before we would be opponents. Also, you didn't hear about this driving thing? Hell, he might remember when she made him like <laughs> tap the brake when he didn't need to and lay what out. I, I they will need all that, man. <laughs> when he hears this podcast, he really might come after me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Time to see the payoff next year. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think it's time for a colossal question, no? Oh, that doesn't sound Man, it's, it, it's been so long since I've done this. Well, for her, it's been a year. You've been doing this for a year, right? Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> what I normally do is ask this question for people, you know, down the line. But since you're only in it for a year, the one thing I want to know is, from from your se uh, segment of wrestling up until now, from starting the training, what five songs got you through the hardest times of wrestling? Five songs? Songs. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, oh, guys, this is going to be so nerdy. Um, I like nerdy. That's well, okay, so no, um, so the first one would definitely be, um, and the other thing is, I don't know the real names of songs. It's just the name that I gave them. Um, so it's Demi Lovato, um, Confident, or like, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, okay. what's wrong with being confident? I got you. Yes, yeah, yes that one. Um, and also Demi Lovato's uh, Sorry Not Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's, um, oh, shoot. It's actually like a collaboration. So it's, um, oh, what is her name with the ponytail? Ariana Grande yeah. and um, uh, Nicki Minaj and someone else. And it's called Bang Bang. Oh, uh, yeah, Jesse J. Jesse J. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, it just gets me hype. I don't know why. Um, so there's those three. Um, and then, hmm. Oh, so uh, Megan Trainer. the song is just called No. <laughs> okay. That's four. Um. um Oh, and then Katy Perry's Roar. I feel like that's a de facto. Because <laughs> well, I, I, I low-key get caught up singing that, especially when I'm in L.A., which no one cares if you're singing in L.A. But. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too disappointed there was no Michael Bublé in there. There was not. But listen, you, you turn on Michael Bublé and you turn on um, Feeling Good, and I will like dying giraffe sing the crap out of that song <laughs> well, now, every time 
we found out what your karaoke song is. It took some digging, but we got there. I know. I had had to list our soundtrack for it again, but we got it. But I only know about sixty percent of the words, so <laughs> that's basically karaoke. <laughs> Hey, I only know one percent of the thong song. Doesn't stop me from singing it. <laughs> Isn't there only one percent of actual words in the thong song, though? <laughs> All I know is I let it a bit of dope, but a but a. There you go. That's all you need to know. I mean, I That's all I need to know. I know. It's the queen. Dumb. Bother being bow down. Number name and number down. Yeah, yeah. no. Doesn't stop me from jamming. Yep. <laughs> I mean, just See? Uh, quick and well, random. All right. Um, five incredible songs. Can you lock them in? Yes. All right. You are next one. Now, uh, could you tell us your opinion on Job Sampson? Oh, man. I'm glad he's disappeared right now. Oh, he's missing? Not literally. Like, um, I'm thinking that the rumor is he got hurt. Mm. And so... All he's really doing is just talking a bunch of smack from like his yard. Oh. I think. So, yeah. Maybe he'll call it quits. I mean, you never know. We've had. Two, I don't know. Everybody that's had an encounter with Jock Samson, it doesn't seem like they have anything good to say about Jock. That's because there's nothing good to say about Jock. He's a drunk old cowboy that wears baby gap. Sorry, that wasn't really Sarah Bubbles, was it? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I mean, um, I'm sure he's nice deep down inside. <laughs> we can edit that out, right? That might be the clip that we put we post. Yeah, that's the one. That is the one. Listen, that was like countrified, like, shoot. <laughs> I know, that's right down my alley. I was, man, I'm like, shh, I might have to go get some biscuits and gravy after that. Some shit. Wash it down with the moonshine. <laughs> yep. Jump out of a mason jar. Yep, sure did. Tell you, slurp it with your straw. <laughs> and pick your teeth with it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this is not Sarah Bubbles. Now stop it. <laughs> we can't post this. <laughs> It'd be a, not, you're right. It is Sarah. It ain't Sarah Bubbles. It's Sarah Bubbles. <laughs> there you go. You made me put that that asterisk on and try to make me all fancy, but they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get in so much trouble for this when I go to training. <laughs> oh. and but no, Jock's not a pleasant fella. Now on to an even more controversial subject than Jock Sampson. Pineapple Is there on pizza. One? What's your stance? Here's my stance. Different strokes for different folks, but it's not for me. That was uh, a quick, simple, and to the point, no? That was the Sarah Bubbles. <laughs> the, short, the shortest answer. <laughs> All right. And, of course, you can uh, choose your side at uh, Pizza Party Pro's Forbidden Fruit event August 20th on IWTV. Check it out. Um... What's your spirit Pokemon? Um, I have, I, I'm Sarah Bubbles. I don't participate in Pokemon. Um, it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm Sarah Bubbles. I just don't participate in Pokemon. So I don't really know anything about that stuff. But I know there's one called Jigglypuff, and I think it's pink, so probably that one. All right. We love Jigglypuff. 
<coughs> go. Weirdest question to ever be asked on a wrestling podcast. Would you Doubt ever it. consider wrestling a rock? Not Dwayne Johnson, not the country, an actual physical rock. <laughs> so the very first thought that popped in my head <laughs> was, well, I've wrestled Brock's boulder in like practice matches. So then my the quote from SpongeBob pops in my head, it's not a rock, it's a boulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's a no. I mean, I watched a clip of Chris Jericho wrestling the air. So if you can wrestle the air and make it look that good, then I feel like I should be able to wrestle a rock. Saying she's already did it with Brock Boulder. That's what she's saying. I, she's already got the experience. <laughs> well, just for context, there's this guy named Psycho Mike that wrestled an actual rock for over 15 minutes in what was dubbed a Tungsten Man match, an Iron Man match that lasts for two weeks. Sheesh. That sounds exhausting. But also, it sounds like great strength training. Yes, especially when you uh, don't win the match. <laughs> yes, oh. he wasn't rock solid as much as he thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> On the show, we love the late, great Tracy Smothers. Do you know the acronym for THUG? T-H-U-G. Um, no. I was going to try to be clever and make something up on the spot, but I've been told that I should stop trying to be funny because I'm really not. Oh, we've had a ball. I don't know what you're talking about. Coco, you do know the acronym. Could you invite in Miss Bubbles? Uh... It's been a minute, and when I'm thinking thug, I literally am stuck with thugonomics because so I, I got a kid who's been, yeah, I got a kid who's been trying to rap that word for word. I'm like, uh, nah. <laughs> Let's go. T is for terrible. H is for hell. U is for ugly, and G is for jail because I'm thug. Can't smell. Well, now we know. Yes. <laughs> it is once again time for that segment. Sarah Bubbles was your adventure. I mean, probably not. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was trying to think of what I'm allowed to share. Um, so just a couple weeks ago, um, we did a show up in a little tiny town called New Haven, West Virginia. It's, it's just as cute as it sounds. Um, when we were about a mile from the venue, we passed this tiny little park and I see like the coolest slide ever. I don't know how old you guys are, but it reminded me of a slide from my childhood where it was all metal. Um, the ones that would leave blisters all the way down your legs. But this slide went all the way down this hill. So like a normal slide would be like 20 feet long. This thing was every bit of 100 feet long. It was so cool. So, of course, Brox is driving. Um, I'm riding shotgun, and we got two guys in the back. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's a slide. Well, we drive right past. And the guys, we're all about the same age in the car, except Brox is a little bit older. I'll just throw that out there. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so they were like, well, what kind of slide? Well, the guys in the back saw it. And they were like, oh, my gosh, stop. So we're all, like, explaining to Brox the slide, literally at least 100 feet long, all the way down a hill slide, totally metal. And yes. so he legit turns around 
like about a half mile up the road, turns around, we go back, we all took turns riding down this slide. And we have, um, I think we've got it on video somewhere too. Coolest thing ever. Okay. We, we were actually a little late getting to the venue, like not, not for the show, but like for the super early time for the ring setup that we were supposed to be there because we wanted to ride the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I hope as this was at a, in early in the morning, because I know when I, I'm of that age with those metal slides, and those were death when they've been in the sun all day. You just literally, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I survived those slides. Dude, it was like 1230. 1230. Oh, <laughs> high noon too. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's where I to get like eight degree burns on that damn thing <laughs> it was it, it actually wasn't as bad as i was expecting it to be but i do think that the trees had been shading it for most of the morning and they had just exposed it to the sun like just Oof, based no. off of the sun movement patterns and stuff oh god thank you because yeah, i seen them things them things sitting out in the broad they like oh yeah Ugh. yeah but that was super fun that's probably the 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 most fun, like spontaneous thing that I've I've had on a road trip so far. Alright. Um, on a more serious note, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't. I I'm realistic. I'm I'm not planning to like make it to the big times. But I also don't plan on being that washed up. You know super old lady that's really just hoping to get booked every once in a great while. So I don't plan on riding this way forever, but in five years, yeah, I'll probably still be doing it. Um, I don't want to travel crazy lengths and distances because I have kids. Um, I don't want to drag them all over the world. Um, but so probably just, hanging out around here, you know, a few states over, maybe a, a plane ride or so, but I'll be taking them with me. <laughs> so whatever the promotion can afford, if you can afford to, to fly me and my kids and get me a hotel room, then hey, let's do it. If you can't, that's okay. I'm sure you can find someone else. And that's like, it's not me being conceited. It's just me being realistic. I know what I want. And you can't afford that, then I'm okay with it. And no love lost. You know what I mean? No, I think it's, you know, for your situation, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what is some that people should go out of their way to see the best source of what Sarah Bubbles is all about? Okay, wait, say it again. What's a match that people should go out of their way to see the best source of what you're all about? Hello. I, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I don't know if like I'm not understanding you or if like it's okay. been a super long day. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can let me, let me let me put this in southern terms. What Please. what's the, what's the go-to match that everybody likes to see that shows what Sarah Bubbles is? You mean like that's out there in the world, like that they can look up? Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, so here's the biggest problem with that. Like, I don't know if it's me or if I have bad luck, but literally every time I get recorded, it it becomes non-existent. So the only, like, footage of me is stuff that I post on my page. So I don't even have, like, full matches, like, on YouTube or on, like, a FTC page or anything. I have, like, clips on my Instagram or stuff like that. Um, but I have, I mean, I have good stuff on there, but it's just clips and stuff. Right. So I don't just, I don't have any full matches. Hopefully one day soon, I have considered starting a YouTube channel for myself so that I can put that like as a link somewhere. Um, but that even with that, I would still, I don't think I even have any full matches. Um, you I just have to record your matches for you. And yeah. Have them up there. Either that or Jock is deleting them. One or the other. That's got to be it. Yeah. It has to be. 
<laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. He's mad because he wanted the Sarah Bubbles gimmick, and somebody told him that he just couldn't pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I totally see. If you had a went the heel route, I e easily could have saw you using like the bubble juice to throw it in people's eyes, like the grape Muda or some shit. But that, that's just me. <laughs> bubble, that's yeah. just me. In the eyes. Yes, because you know. You gotta put soap and water together and make bubbles. Wow, so you know. I mean, I do come out to the ring with bubble guns, like those automatic ones. Yes. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I she's just, like the rat. That's what I'm saying. Twist the thing. Go pow, pow. You know what I'm saying? Aim them at people. Turn them on high power. But no, that's not what Sarah Bubbles is about, man. Sarah Bubbles is about having a good time. Hey, oh. you gotta have a you have a better time when you're a champion. Any means okay. necessary. <laughs> Well, I mean, if I can get Reese Ramon out of my way, then I can uh, be the number one contender for the FTC Women's Champion. Right now, our our Women's Champion is Ray Lynn, and oh yes. So I'm hoping really soon Reese and I will have. I'm hoping. I don't know. There's nothing in the works yet, but hopefully soon we can have a number one contenders match. Um, because we don't really have a number one contender right now. It's just Ray Lynn is just there, just dominating. Yeah. Awesome. Um, looking down on her hill that she's on. Right. Yeah. And so hopefully, like, we can just figure out who really is going to be in line for that. And then between me and Reese, we can decide who's going to get up there. And then one of us can go for it with Ray Lynn and at least have a shot at it. I mean, Ray Lynn is an awesome competitor. Yeah. For sure. That's definitely going to be for anybody of, but, of all but, not in the climb. Mm -hmm. Of course, but pretend that it's that metal slide that's mm -hmm. 100 feet and you were dying to get to it. Mm. It was so cool. It was the coolest thing ever. Like, and it was so funny because we're driving down this like country road where it's like trailer, trailer, old shed, trailer. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it's just like this little wooden park with the awesome slide. Like, <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. I was like, oh my gosh. Sorry, I, I geeked out. It was really cool. <laughs> I know, especially when you'd be like, you're driving through this hell and it's like trailer, beat up, store, trailer. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like backwoodsy. And you'd be like, y'all ain't got money to fix around it, but at least y'all got this fucking slide. I appreciate it. <laughs> it was really cool. It was like, you know, and it's like cornfield, 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 cornfield. Super cool slide. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It was cool. It was a nice surprise. And we had, it was like right before we got to the venue. So we had been on the road for about two hours. So, you know, you're like, are we there yet? Yeah. <laughs> so, it was awesome. All right. Since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, we are wrestling with the eight questions of doom. Dun, dun, dun. This is our speed round, our bonus round, the round where we see who you really are. Are you ready, Sarah? Oh gosh, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Hmm. Oh gosh, I know I'm going to answer this the wrong way. Um, let's just go with, um, oh, I can see his face, the guy, um, You know what? Make it. It. No, here, screw it. I know you guys aren't going to agree with me, and everybody's going to burn me alive for this. I'm saying Kevin Owens. I love him. Ooh. Yeah, you ain't for the man. Yeah, that is, yeah, he's legit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I I have no idea. I I don't know enough wrestlers. I don't know enough about wrestling for this. <laughs> I, think, I think you may have answered this question a little earlier, Sarah. Did I? Um. Did I? Are you sure? <laughs> I think the the reaction we got out of you when we talked about John. 
but if you're not oh like, well of course jock i was trying to think like you know professionals but yeah jock's the worst wrestler of all time <laughs> the dude tells you to jump when you take a bump why on earth would you jump when you take a bump i mean seriously <laughs> Well, yeah. she could feel that. Yeah. Your main event in WrestleMania for the World Championship. Who is your opponent? It would definitely be um, Becky Lynch. All right. If you, could, nice. if you could come out to anyone's entrance who would get past or present, who would it be? Um, I really like... Well, and she's not there anymore, but, um, and her real name's Trinity. What was it? Naomi. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Which one? The, the, the one she just recently had with the glow stuff. Yeah. Oh, the, the, um, like bring it to the, the dub. Yeah. yeah. The dubstep version. I kind of like the hip hop version better. Oh man. I just, I just want to get hype and I just want to go nuts and I just want to like, yeah, buddy. Fun fact, Naomi got me engaged. Really? Yes. That's exciting. She's a sweetheart. Finish the sentence. K-Fade is... Everything. Nice. Squash. Fruit or vegetable? Um, it's the best kind of wrestling match. <laughs> I will accept that answer. That is the greatest answer ever. No, that that's right. That is the, the greatest match ever. <laughs> New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring heel gets smaller every year, revealing more of himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trunks of butt cheek ratio for ring gear? Depends on if you're talking about a man or woman. Um, in general. No, depends on if you're talking about man or woman. <laughs> but let's say man and Do both. Do both. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for men, I think the biker shorts are much more a appealing in my just is just my personal opinion i don't think men look good in trunks i have yet to find a man that looks good in trunks i think the biker shorts look much better sorry if you are a man out there that wears trunks um i like the biker shorts like uh what riddle wears with yeah. you know what i'm talking about yeah okay i don't know if i'm using the right terminology at all um but like riddle wears those biker shorts i think those are much more appealing i will not use the word attractive because i don't think that's i'm not trying to use sexual terms, you know what I mean? Because I don't think that's what it's about. What? Um, for women, I think for if we are really trying to fight to be seen as non-sexual objects, then we shouldn't have half of our butt cheeks hanging out. Um, so I feel like if you're going to wear a trunk type of thing, just make sure it covers the entire cheeks. If you want to be seen as a sexual object, then wear a freaking thong if you want. I don't care. Um, but if we're fighting for equality, then let's cover at least our whole butt. All right. That's my opinion. And the last question, the main event, the thing everybody wants to know. Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger in a supermarket about Darby Allen? Never in my entire life. And never will I, because if someone tries to ask me about Darby Allen, I'll pretend like I don't know who that is. Why? <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't think anybody would have ever had anybody to say, yes, if somebody came up to me and said, do you know who Darby Allen is, would be done. And they would oh yes, it. oh yes, we've got it. Um, so if, this is a multi-answer, a uh, multi-part answer. Number one, because I don't like talking to people. Um, oh, no. Number two, I don't like talking to strangers. Oh, no. Number three, I don't like talking about Darby Allen. Oh, 
Ah, see, it's all it's a multi layer. Well, better than me, because we did it, and I had a guy ask me, "Hey, does that guy owe you money or something?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, <laughs> they thought I was on the hunt for somebody, so I had to make sure. You know, I, <laughs> and of course, that is the correct answer, Sarah. That is the end of the interview. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with us. Thanks, guys. It was super fun. It was a fun. It's always a fun time to do podcasts, but you guys kept it from not being boring. So I appreciate that. We like to keep it interesting. I mean, you could only go with what you got in the wrestling so long. I, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's it's nice to not be um, interrogated, also. So that's that's always fun. Yes. Oh yes. And there's a couple of. People that do that, and uh, yeah, it's not—it's not a fun time. This is true. <laughs> but uh, what is a fun time is where we can find you on social media and your multi-life. Yeah, so you can find me on Facebook, um, Sarah Bubbles, with the weird so accent mark. Blaze, <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Sarah underscore Bubbles underscore seven four zero seven four zero. Sorry. Um, you can find me on Twitter. If you, I don't remember my Twitter handle, but it's like Sarah underscore Bubbles underscore maybe. Um, you can also find my promotion, FTC Wrestling, and my training facility, FTC Art of Grappling. And of course, you uh, you don't need to uh, go looking for those links. You don't need to type into your Google machine. Uh, simply go into the description of the video below, click the link, and you will be on those pages. Um, and of course, you could DM for, for some awesome merchandise. I mean, you've been listening to Hulk for just under an hour and a half. Buy a damn shirt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I I love that. I love that stuff. My kid does the same thing. He'll come in and hijack me too. So I've been there. <laughs> I feel you. I feel your pain on that one. Well, I was mostly apologizing for the fact that they've listened to me for an hour and a half, but the kid too. Yeah. Uh, oh no no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're you're the star. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, nobody, nobody's listening to us, listening to this, wanting to listen to me and click off. Yeah, no one's trying to listen to me for an hour and a half. I'd be damned. I mean, this is your return episode. They did come just because you are making your return. I, I don't know. Uh, no, and definitely not. No, definitely not. See? See? <laughs> this isn't this. This is not a Simba Lion King return moment. That's for damn sure. Not the prodigal son, huh? <laughs> not the prodigal son. No, not at all. <laughs> Just think of it as a a, a seventh month break. Uh, when you, you know you at the job and you're like, I'm gonna take a break, and then you don't come back for three months. That's what happens. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Oh man, that's great. <laughs> of course, if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, but I need to get the cast off. Of course, this was sponsored by Wood Energy and Trail on Coffee. Um, you can follow, uh, join us next Wednesday as we have another incredible interview for you. Um, and information on who that interview may be, uh, you can find on our, our Twitter page at Rusty E. Uh, for all your news on upcoming interviews, um, when they come out, links, etc., etc., and of course on Instagram at Rusty as well. Um, you can follow us individually on Twitter as well. I'm at JJ993. What can we find from Nico? They might find me in LA randomly singing Katy Perry Roar on I Am Calico. And of course, you can find uh, Scooter Dust uh, at Scooter Dust and on the Remix. Uh, join us um, uh, for the live alternative commentary for SummerSlam with myself, Scooter, and Ryan Dust. 
Um, and you can always find him on uh, the Smoking uh, the Smoking Dragon's um, Twitch stream as well. Now, Sarah, when I say wrestling with, you say entertainment, okay? Okay. For our very special guest, Sarah Bubbles, Coleco Yacht, Scooter Dust, I'm James Shea, and this has been Wrestling With... Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.